Hey, how's it going? I'm Grant Swanson, and welcome to another exciting tutorial. My next tutorial on creating digital cinema and adding more film-like and cinema-like qualities to your digital video will be out shortly. I've just decided to add on to it and expand to it. I've made it longer, added more tips and techniques to it. I think you'll like it. Uh, so that'll be out shortly, but in the meantime, I've come up with this to keep you busy. And so basically, if we scrub through here, we can see we just have a drive-by shot of this, these trees and this parking lot. And But there's a lot of unwanted jitter in it, but we still want to... So what we want to do is remove that jitter, but we want to retain the original motion of the shot. So that's what we're going to do. So with the footage selected, come up and choose Animation, Stabilize Motion. This will bring up the After Effects Tracker Controls. And just make a little room here. And all we need for this shot, I know, because I've tried this a few times now, is position. But if rotation and scale will apply to your shot, by all means, click them. If we just scrub through here, we can find a spot in the image that we can use as a track point that stays in the shot and in the frame the entire time. And I'm guessing this tree right here, the tip of this tree does, and that seems to be a good tracking point, too. You want to always choose areas of contrast, areas that will stand them apart from the areas around them, surrounding areas. And that'll just make for a better track. And we don't really need to adjust that much. It seems pretty good itself. So if we hit Analyze Forward here, we'll just wait for that to finish. All right, so now that it's done, we can just scrub through here. We can see that the tracking point pretty much stays right on the tip of the tree, which is what we want. So that's good. So we can click Apply. The dialog will come up asking us if we want to apply it to both the X and Y dimensions. And we do, so click OK. So now if we scrub through here, we can see that our image is stabilized and all the little jitters are taken out, but the entire shot completely moves out of the frame, uh, which we don't want. So if we just select the footage and hit A, that'll bring up the anchor point parameters, and we can see that this is where our tracking data is applied. So that means if we hit P, we can adjust the position without affecting the anchor point data. So if, make sure you're at the beginning, set a keyframe for the position, go to the end of the composition, and drag your footage back into place where you want it to be. Right about there, it doesn't have to be perfect, but closer the better. Then go around the middle, drag it back, go in between each of these points here, and just drag it back using as few keyframes as possible. Just try and get your um, spot to be right on. And again, if you hit the apostrophe key next to enter, return on your keyboard, that will bring up these action safe and title safe areas. And pretty much all of this movement is outside of those, so it's probably not going to be cut off anyway in the end. And of course, if you crop your footage to a letterbox, uh, the top and bottom will be cut off, so you don't have to worry too much about it sneaking out of the edge of the frame. So again, just as few keyframes as possible would be the best. Like When it comes out big like this, I like to just drag it back in, but you don't have to. Alright, so if we just scrub through here now, you can see that the shot is looking pretty smooth. All of the little jitters and shaky movements have been taken out. And we are left, left with the original movement of the footage, but it's still smooth. Now, you don't actually have to apply keyframes to all this. There is an expression you can apply directly to the position parameter. And I'll show you that. So just hit the keyframe again here for the position to turn off those keyframes and Alt. Click, hold on Alt, and click on the keyframe so we can write in an expression. <clears throat> so just type in anchor point dot smooth, open parentheses, width equals, we'll start with a brown 0.75, comma, samples, equal um, around 9, and parentheses, and hit enter on your keypad. If we scrub through here, you can see it's done the exact same thing for us, is, but in all of our, the major motion is still there, but the, all the little jitters and the unwanted movement are gone. So, actually, I prefer to set the keyframes in myself, just because I feel like I have more control over the shot that way. But if you prefer the expression, by all means, use the expression. So, as I've said before, all of these black areas that come out and sneak in are outside of the action safe areas. And if you crop your footage to a letterbox, you won't have to worry about what's on the top. And so there's a few different things we can do in order to stop those areas from coming in. One, we can just take the layer and pre-compose it, make sure you move all attributes into the new comp, and then just hit S to bring up the scale properties and scale it up a little bit. Now, I don't like doing this because it softens the image and I, I just never like to scale up the footage, so you don't have to do that if you don't want. So we'll just undo that. What we can do, we can duplicate the footage. So if we take this bottom layer and pre-compose it by going layer, 
pre-compose, move all attributes into the new comp, click OK. Then we can hit the scale, hit S to bring up the scale properties and just bring the scale of that bottom layer up. And as you can see here, what happens is we don't really notice it when, it, when the shot goes out. It's, you'll see this line, but it doesn't really matter because it's on the outside of the action safe areas and it's on the very edge. And to soften that a little bit, what we can do is by selecting the top layer, double click on the mask tool there. It'll create a mask around it for us. Hit MM on the keyboard to bring up the mask options. Bring the mask expansion down around negative 5 pixels. And then bring the feathering up to 5 pixels. And that will just smooth that line for us. You can maybe even go all the way to negative 10 and 10 if you want. And that will just smooth the line out a little bit further for us so you won't notice it as much. So that's one option of doing it. And the last option, this is actually the way here I prefer the best, but there is one more option I'll show you now. Just do that. Delete that one. Hit M on the keyboard for this and just delete that mask. There's one more thing we can do in order to do that, and that's applying an effect. So go to Effect, Stylize, Motion Tile. Click Mirror Edges and bring the output width up around 110, somewhere around there. But I don't really like this because it leaves us with these really kind of funky looking um, objects on the sides here, especially when you're in areas of contrast like this. You can see the trees starting to come in here a little bit. It just looks very weird. And I actually think that's more noticeable than just having the line there from the duplicated footage underneath, but you don't have to. And the reason I'm not applying this to the height is because I'll end up cropping this footage anyway. But if you're not going to crop your footage, then you can certainly apply it to the height. So these are all the ways you can stabilize your motion, keep the original movement, remove the unwanted movement, remove all of the jitters. And once that's done, you can remove the black areas by using a motion tile, by scaling up your footage, which I don't like because it softens the image. By duplicating the footage, putting it underneath, you can also scale up that duplicated footage underneath, but you don't have to. Um, so there's several options for you. You choose which one's best for you. And one more thing before I go here, I just want to remind you to check out my blog. That's videoapex.blogspot.com. And I want you to, if you just take 30 seconds, I have these a couple of poll questions on the side here, on the left, right-hand side of the blog. If you just vote on those, that'll just help me out with the tutorials and will help me to help you with my future tutorials. So once again, I'm Grant Swanson for creativecow.net, and I'll see you next time.